All right, so hopefully you just watched uh, the URL query string variable lesson. That was only four minutes. And then the one before it where we dealt with uh, WordPress template files. So you can cook all this magic into your WordPress site. Now we're going to actually deal with the databases. And by the way, if you are a Cartoon Smart subscriber, um, we, we give you free hosting now. Okay, and I'm just using one of those free hosting accounts. So uh, if, if you're, uh, you know, if you want to do what I'm doing, Signing up for a Cartoon Smart subscription gets you all the tutorials, all that other good stuff, and it gets you hosting. All right, so uh, this is the part where I don't want you to be afraid. Okay, we've uh, we're looking at the PHP My Admin area, which is where all your database tables are, which essentially control your website, right? So this stuff over here, we're gonna leave alone. This is all kind of WordPress's, you know, stuff, right? Uh, what we're going to do is make our own table. Now, uh, go over here to new, okay? Table name should always start with WP, okay? Don't worry about stepping on anybody else's toes because you can put in here some sort of identifier just for you, right? So let's say something like WP Cartoon Smart Polls. All right, so we're going to make a quick little poll here. Um, now, the reason you do this is so that if you're using a backup uh, utility, uh, Typically, what they do is they go through in here, they look for anything that starts with WP and underscore, and they automatically back that up. All right, so if you're using Vault Press, whatever it is. Uh, okay, so here's something I, I usually end up doing, I think most people do this too, is I'll, I'll make the first column just called ID, okay? Um, you could set this to int or, or even big int or something like that. You'll, you'll never put in 20, basically the length here is the... Uh, let's say a number with 20 zeros, right, or 19 zeros. You'll never go that high, but if you want to, feel free. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be the primary index. All right, just click OK on that. And then AI stands for, not artificial intelligence, auto increment. So anytime we add something to this table, this column over here, ID, is just going to start at 1. It's going to go to 2, 3, 4, whatever. If it deletes, if you delete an entry in it, it's not going to go back and start filling in one again. It's going to go to the next number up and so on like that. Uh, it's just most databases, uh, it's recommended you have some sort of primary key and and and, and uh, it should auto increment up. That's the easiest way to deal with it. All right. Um, I also <laughs> like putting in date added. All right. In case you ever down the road find a reason that you want to kind of separate your results out by when they were added. And uh, for this, go in here and put in the current timestamp, and then you just want to put in a uh, date, uh, I'm sorry, timestamp, <laughs> I was about to say date time. Uh, you don't need to put in here the, the length or values for that, okay? All right, so after you've done that, um, here's where you'd start putting in things. I don't know why it keeps putting my name in there. Oh, I guess because it says name. Uh, here's where we want to start putting in the things that uh, are, are going to change based on whatever you're using your database for, okay? So let's let's put in poll ID, all right? And uh, this will just end up being a number that, um, let's say, multiple uh, qu questions uh, share, all right? So, for example, if we have a, a question that is, you know, do you like eggs, yes or no, right? Um, we could, uh, we, we could, well, yeah, we could basically assign the, uh, those, the answers to a particular poll ID, all right? And actually what you'd probably want to do down the road is maybe even have a, an actual poll question identifier and stuff like that. But let's let's just go with poll ID for now. Um, we'll leave it as an int. Uh, let's just go for uh, 12 or something like that. And uh, all right, and then what we're gonna want to do, we'll want to put in here a question, all right? So this will be the question. This will be a variable character, right? Um, and then you gotta kinda think ahead how long do you think these questions will ever end up being? Maybe a thousand characters at most. Uh, and then we need to add in another column over here. Uh, so then we'd have the basically the answer text, right? So if the question is, um, I don't know, do you like kittens? <laughs> and the answers are yes, no, and maybe your answer text would be one of those three, yes, no, or maybe, right? So let's go in here and put in here answer text one. Again, this is gonna be a, a variable character amount. So let's just say at most, it's probably the length of a, a, a Twitter, a tweet, it's 300 characters or so. Uh, and then we wanna do that same, oh, and no, I'm sorry, then one more. Let's, um, before we start repeating ourselves, we'd say answer count one, okay? 
And uh, that would be the total number of times people have, um, you know, answered that or basically voted for that, right? Uh, and then let's do the, do the same thing for uh, two, two more possibilities here. So we're going to go and add in four of those. So this will be answer text two. This will be answer text three. Answer count two. Answer count three. And then we want to set these to be variable characters, variable characters, and again, make that 300. And then I guess at some point here, you got to figure out how many times do you think people are going to really, you know, vote for this. So let's just put in here five, five, and five. And that doesn't mean that you only get five votes on each one. It means that this would hold up to 10,000 votes, basically, right? Because there's, in 10,000, there's what? Five characters, five digits, right? So there you go. All right, uh, we are ready then to save this out. And I'll click save on that. It's getting cut off a little bit, huh? All right, so if we needed to add anything more to this down the road, uh, we could go over here to structure uh, and then just add in more columns. Then you get to choose kind of where you want those to be. Hit go, and you'll see, obviously, you get to do that. Uh, back over here to browse, obviously, we don't have any uh, questions or answers in here yet. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we're going to insert in our first poll question and uh, poll ID. I'll also set this to be one. And then what we shall do is we don't need to put anything in here. That's going to automatically happen. Remember, we set that to be auto increment. So don't worry about that. Uh, questions. Um, Oh, how about shameless plugging? Have you been to Cartoon Smart before? Yeah, you know, while well, we're shamelessly plugging, might as well put in the domain. Uh, and then let's put in here, uh, yes, in the last week. <laughs> sure. Uh, again, we don't need to put in, oh, uh, yeah, I mean, this would just by default be zero, but you could put in there zero. In fact, let's just go ahead and do it for all of them. And we could have defined the default for that as zero, but that's okay. Um, it'll say yes in the last year, and then no, not ever. All right, that's the saddest answer of all. Okay, so go back over here to browse, and you can see, here we go. Now, imagine this if I had multiple questions, right? So I could, again, I could assign them kind of to the same poll, right? And um, so I could have poll one for each one of these, or I could um, just keep incrementing upwards with poll IDs as well. But um, there we go. All right, so let's actually use this information, and we need to head back over here to our PHP file. All right, so back in our PHP file, I think this looks mostly like it did in the last lesson. Uh, what we're going to do is let's change the variable right here. Let's change this to uh, something like the poll ID. Okay, so I'm going to copy that, put that right there. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that line. And instead of getting out of the URL string, uh, just this generic variable over here. Let's just put in here poll ID. All right. So the poll ID is going to be a, be whatever we get out of here. So again, just to kind of nail this in. So now what we're going to be looking for is instead of variable equals cartoonsmart.com, what we're looking for here is going to be poll ID, and we're going to want this to match at least one of our potential question and answer uh, rows in the database. And remember, we put in here poll ID for one. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking for. Uh, obviously, that's not going to do anything right now other than mess us up. So let's go and uh, let's switch back over this way. And we need uh, to connect to our database now. All right. And what I'm going to do is put all of that information into this connect.php file. Okay, that way it's reusable. So We'll go through, through that in just a moment, but here's how this is going to look. We're just going to put it here, include, and then connect.php. So all the code that you have inside of here is essentially running right here as well, okay? And I don't have to put this right there. I could put this up, up at the top of the file. It's fine. It's, uh, it can kind of go anywhere. Uh, we'll, we'll put it... We'll, we'll include it after the header. How about that? All right, so let's go through this line by line. Uh, we're getting this global WPP, uh, WPDB uh, variable, which is already 
something that already exists out there, which has a bunch of properties for the WordPress database, right? So all we're just pulling out of here is the um, the host. A lot of times this is going to equal localhost, but um, as I found uh, doing some testing right here, uh, it it's a slightly different, right? And wherever you're testing this, you can echo out any one of these to kind of see if you're curious. Hey, you know what? What's server name? Okay. Um, obviously you don't want to echo that out <laughs> in production, right? Uh, but anyway, it, uh, so we're just going to get a, a, a database name, a username, a password, and I'm just kind of prettying these up a little bit, pulling them out of the, the properties of, of this global variable. That's what this is. It's basically indicating that, you know, this is a property of that variable. Uh, and a lot of times you see that um, in other languages written <laughs> the way I'd prefer dots and text, right? So it'd be like DB host, All right? Okay, but you know what? Hey, that's how PHP does it. And it's kind of got a little bit of flair to it, right? It's a little, hey, look at that. We made an arrow. Okay, so uh, then we are uh, creating this MySQL um, variable over here. This is going to be what we use to uh, run all of our MySQL I statements that basically pull information to and fro the database. Okay, so again, this is stuff that you're going to end up using over and over again. So you might as well just put it in the separate file. Um, and this doesn't really, th this isn't um, pulling any information out of the out of the database. It's just seeing if it's connecting, okay? And if it has, has trouble connecting, you're gonna know about it because it's gonna say error connecting to database. And I think that's pretty much where we can leave it at. Uh, so let's go back over here to our testing.php file. And this would be a good time to test to make sure everything works. So I'm going to dump that testing.php file in there. Of course, I got to do that with the connect.php file as well. In fact, I already did it. And let's just go and see what happens over here. So I'm going to refresh this page and I don't see anything now. Well, that's fine. Um, it's more important that I'm not seeing the error message, okay? Uh, because uh, right now I don't have anything being printed out here, okay, other than these div statements, which are not going to be visible in the HTML anyway. So what we want to do at this point is, uh, well, we're already checking to see if we're, we're getting that poll ID. So let's do this. Uh, let's make the poll ID start off at zero, okay, so it'll be an actual number. And then we're going to say is if the poll ID is greater than zero, okay, that means basically it's been set over here, right? We're gonna do stuff in here, right? Connect to DB. Uh, else, well, something bad happened, right? We didn't put that in. So we'll just say error, uh, no poll set. Okay, and you can of course test that right now by just excluding this in there, but let's keep going with it. Okay, so uh, at this point, what we're going to do is actually um, connect to the database and to save us a little bit of time because I know we're kind of running short on that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and add this in. So statement is going to equal MySQLi. Remember, that's what we created over here, that variable. And we're going to prepare to select all uh, rows from our Cartoon Smart polls. Remember, this is that. That's what we created over here. That's our table. Uh, where poll ID is going to equal this question mark. And here's where we're going to uh, basically say what that question mark is. Okay. So we're going to bind in a parameter over here. D means it's going to be a number. Okay. I think of it as decimal, but I mean, in this case, it's really kind of more of an integer. But um, <laughs> I don't even know if that's really what that D is stands for uh and uh and then we can go ahead and put in here uh the poll id let's, let's replace that after the actual variable and uh and then we've uh and this is a much longer lesson as to why we're binding parameters and not just writing in here one uh we'll get to that eventually but uh We'll just just <laughs> just make it a given for right now. We're gonna have to do it like that. Okay. All right. Then we want to actually uh, execute our statement. All right. So it's gonna go and connect to the database, and then we've got this result variable. Okay, which is the statement and the property here is whatever the result is. Get result, uh, and then we want to see w what. Uh, here, I'll just paste it in. 
We want to see if, if the result actually has uh, a number of rows to it, right? Uh, and it should. We should have at least one. Okay, so that means that this statement is going to be true right here. Of course, we need to finish off that. Uh, oops, close that off. So the number of rows is going to be greater than zero. Uh, and then we want to iterate through those rows. Okay, so we're going to put in here while. And then uh, this is going to be row. How come I'm not just pasting this in? You know what? I'm just going to paste it in. <laughs> And, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and put the rest of it in here, too. All right. So while row, e row equals the resu result property of the you know, is going to be fetch association. I've given less than two cents thought to that uh, ever before. <laughs> All I care about in here is that uh, I can now pull out the particular column value from that row. OK, and this is how we do it. Row question. If you remember... Question was this right here, question. Okay, so what I should be seeing if I were to echo this out is that, okay? So I could go through here and get a, I should get the answer text, I could get the count, and so on, by just changing out what is inside of this, okay? But for right now, let's just, let's just go ahead and get the question. Okay, so save it out. Always important, save it out. Throw it up onto the server. I need to go and set up my transmit application. So anytime I save from Sublime, it actually uploads it automatically. That is actually a thing. Uh, and then let's go over here and uh, refresh the page. And sure enough, we are now pulling out data from the database based on this particular query string here. So um, you you could send people uh, to you know different links on. I mean, you basically this could be a link from another page where you go to here pulls out the poll ID and then grabs that information. And of course we got a long way to go before we, you know, we got to put in here the answers and then submit and then everything like that. But we are, I'd say halfway there. And of course, let's do this. Let's just go ahead and take that out. And you can see that if you landed on this page without that poll ID set, now it just says error, no poll set. So, this is a long video, right? Um, let's go ahead and make this, you know, uh, part one of two where we deal with polls. But I promise we'll finish in the next one.